Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, my name is Hollow, and yes, Arceus is finally here. At the best of times, this game looks visually unfinished to me, but mechanically, I do think they've taken a lot of great steps in new directions, with a lot of new mechanics. I do hope they continue down this route. With that in mind, I wanted to make a quick guide to help you guys with your early to mid-game experience while playing yourself. We're talking about the new mechanic crafting today though, and how incredibly useful that is. I'll give you the basics and then the very important locations of materials materials, recipes, and how to make it even more efficient. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Yep, you guessed it, it's Raid Shadow Legends once again. Raid Shadow Legends is of course the extremely popular turn-based strategy game facing off against a massive amount of enemies, big bosses, and that ever-expanding story and world. Raid also has a ridiculous amount of playable champions, over 600 at this point, they each come from various factions with their own histories to learn about. As you can see though, you can scan the QR code on screen to get started, or use our link down below to download the game on your mobile phone or on PC, whichever you prefer. A big part of why we're talking about Raid once again though is due to the brand new boss, or bosses I should say, in the form of the Hydra. While you must overcome the Hydra itself, this is actually a sort of multi-stage fight with each head working in unique ways. Each head will have a main theme and function. Blight is the poison head, Mischief is the one that steals your buffs for example, while various Hydra heads also introduce entirely new mechanics not seen in Raid before, like the Head of Suffering which uses Pain Link. Every time you damage this head, your champions also take damage. Outside of the new big boss battle though, one thing I always like about Raid when I play again is the tavern system. This is a game where we're going to be rolling for champions to build up a team that's ideal, right? And in some gacha games, you can stack up a lot of useless characters or weapons that never see use. Here, if I roll a champion I don't want to use, it can still be useful to me by consuming them to level up a champion I actually care about. Plus this month, there's new champions, the new faction was crit for the new affection, the Shadowkin, and new year events, tournaments and the special fusion event all happening. Jump in now using the links down below or just scan the QR code on screen. If you are a new player though, you'll get a free starter pack worth roughly $30 to get you going. Coming with the free champion Tayrell, 200k in silver, an XP boost, and one energy refill and one ancient shard. These help you summon a champion right from the beginning, and that's going to be a strong start. Just make sure you claim the rewards from your inbox at the top right of your screen, within those 30 days. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring the video though, and thanks to you guys for supporting the channel. All right, with that out of the way though, let's talk crafting. As you'll know very quickly, crafting is very simple at its core. You just need a recipe and then materials to create the items using that recipe. To craft, you'll only need a few resources per item, which can be found out in the world, specific areas of a zone, or only found in specific zones on top of that. Originally, we'll only be able to craft using the craft works in town or by using a work bench at any camp but while doing either of these you actually have access to any material stored anywhere as well as what you've got on your person not too long into the tutorial though and the opening section of the game you'll unlock the crafting kit which can be used in the key items tab of your inventory using the crafting kit you can now craft anywhere in the world which is very important however it's important to know that you can only craft using the kit with materials you have on your person as a limiter next then recipes you can't craft an item and before you've actually learned its recipe recipes are unlocked in various ways and most of the important ones you you'll unlock directly through the main story. However, there's food and other item recipes that you get through requests you find in the world. Certainly important to pick them all up then because of that. You should check the rewards for each because it might not just be a recipe, it could be like a camp unlock or other important rewards. Lastly, another important place to get recipes is obviously the crafting store in town. Here we can buy recipes for quite hefty sums of currency, but they are very important to get. Once you have the recipe though, it'll now appear in your crafting list as an option and it'll list what you actually need when you hover over it. There are four main types of crafts. Pokeballs, lures, battle items, and then the more misc crafts. In the early story, you'll unlock Pokeballs, Potions, Heavy Balls, and Revives, which are all super important. If a Pokemon faints during battle and you don't revive it before the battle ends, then that Pokemon won't receive any XP, which is majorly important to have your Pokemon revive during, say, a noble fight because that rewards insane XP and you don't want to miss it. So those are the recipe types and a bit of information beyond that. Where do we get the materials? I'm going to keep it straightforward as this is aimed at beginners. Pokeballs and battle items are often using similar materials, so do be sure to grab most of the items I'll show here whenever you can. Let's start with the Pokeballs, which is the very first unlocked recipe, which requires one Tumblestone and one Apricorn. These are easy. Tumblestone 
Tumblestone are orange crystals found by large rocks, hills and mountains and they're very easy to farm even if you're going around the borders of a map. Apricorns are the brown apple shapes found on a regular looking tree. Any grass area with trees growing should have apricorns. The next recipe unlocked though is potions, which wants one orange berry and one medicinal leek. Orange berries are the blue apple shapes found on regular trees, just like apricorn, found anywhere trees are growing really, while the medicinal leeks are literal large leeks that are growing from the ground in any area that has any bit of grass. These are used in a lot of recipes, you'll need a lot of them. After that, you're going to get your heavy ball recipe. These require apricorns again, but this time black tumblestone. Black tumblestone is simply a black crystal, just like the regular tumblestone, but darker in color. And these are found in particular Helion Mountain areas. The first place you'll find these is all around the Deer Track Heights in the first zone, so be sure to grab them. Fourth unlocked in the main story is the all-important revives. This one requires two medicinal leeks per, but now one vivichoke. Vivichoke are a cabbage-style, sort of blue and yellow plant that grow from the ground. We can find these on the south side of the obsidian field lands, or once you're beyond the starting area in each zone. Cool. Finally, we should move on to recipes like the super potion and the feather balls. These come later on. The super potion is simply a stronger potion, which uses one regular potion in its craft, and a Pep up plant. Pep up plants are found at the southeastern area of the obsidian field lands and are pretty easy to spot. While the feather ball requires once again an apricorn, but now one sky tumblestone. These are the blue crystals found around very high up areas on hills and mountains. We can get a lot of these if we head to the west of the obsidian field lands all around this very high up lake. All right, so those are the first important recipes from the main story that you're gonna get and where to find all the materials in just the first zone. If we progress into the following zones, you'll find new materials you've not seen before, as well as familiar ones we just talked about in logical locations. Lastly then, I promised some important tips for actually improving your efficiency. First, I want to tell you how to increase your inventory room. After you begin the first noble mission during the main story, you'll be approached by Baggin in the main building. He'll explain that in exchange for currency, he'll teach you how to hold one more item in your inventory. And you can do it more than once, you can do this many times. Each time though, the price increases and it's fine when it's below 1000, but after that, it really skyrockets in price. So I would suggest the moment you unlock this, upgrade until you cannot afford it another time. To make money, we might be back with another video, but a great source is Golden Nuggets, which sell for 10,000 at a shop. Secondly, the farm. In town, you'll notice a farmland to the west. If you go here and speak to Colza, you can exchange currency to grow materials of your choice, which is extremely useful. It doesn't cost that much. In exchange, you get a lot of materials that you choose. It'll take a little bit for them to grow though, usually one or two ventures out into the wild. However, you can actually increase the size of the farm from one plot up to four. This is through the request made by the other farmer here, Miller. He'll first ask for your help after you defeat the first noble. You'll need to give him a ground type Pokemon of some kind, which can be easily be like a Geo dude you find around the deer track heights. After that upgrade, you'll get more materials each time you use the farm. And later, you'll need to do it again with other Pokemon types, but by that point, you should have what you need. Need. After all, the second Pokemon he asks you for is a water type, which you should have loads of by that point. But there you have it, my guide to crafting, recipes, materials, and alongside those important tips. I do hope this helped you, and if it did, please drop a like so I can make more videos like this one. Until next time though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.